Well, we're in the attic again. <laughs> we are. <laughs> and we've got something very interesting and fun for you guys. Oh, of course. From 1968. Shelby, uh, one of our favorite car manufacturers, uh, had come out with the, in 67, mm. with the GT500. Mm. And uh, they were going to do, like AMT was going to do a model and this, that, and the other. And the 67 was available. But the big release came for the 68 mm. GT500 KR. Ooh. And it was a big, huge promotion. And the model came out and a big splash. Yes. Big, big splash. And even the box art. Look at that. Doesn't oh. even have AMT written on the front of it. It just has this beautiful picture of, uh, of a GT500 sitting there in front of some kind of a building, this beautiful painting of this. But part of what made this release so interesting was this. It came with a recording. It did? There's a record in here, one of these cardboard records <laughs> that, that they used to do back they then. They were so funny. I loved it, but They're I didn't. <laughs> just sort of a, a vinyl coating on one side and a pressing of a record, and you could play the record. And this was Carol Shelby in a 67 GT500 taking you one wrap, one wrap, one lap around the Riverside track, which isn't even there anymore. But Carol Shelby uh, and the Shelby cars were legendary at Riverside. Oh, neat. Riverside, they just owned that with the Cobras mm. and the Shelbys. No and, and so AMT had, had said, let's, let's take a lap and record that one whole lap with commentary by Carol Shelby and the sound of the GT500 and then they pressed that into this little record and that came with this kit. Oh, how fun. And um, a lot of kids bought this and built it, myself included, and a lot of kids opened it and maybe almost started on it and then played the record and the records got separated from the kits a oh, lot. Yeah. And almost all the kids built these things and so I dare you to find one. Yeah. This is one of the hardest to find, scarcest, 24th scale cars available and this one is here and it's complete and all of the Look all of that. the bits and pieces oh. are here uh, it could be built and it isn't going to be no, it's better like that. Well. <laughs> because it's all 100 percent complete oh. including the record yes and so i want to show you the record here and now play you the record. So check this out. Carol Shelby on a lap around Riverside in a GT500. This is Carol Shelby. We're sitting at the start finish line at Riverside International Raceway in front of the Goodyear Tower. We're in a GT500. We're going to take you around the racetrack now. Speed ranging up to 135 miles an hour. We'll explain each turn what gear we're in, what RPM, and what speed we're running. Here we go. We're in first gear. 7,000 RPM, second gear. 7, At 7,000 RPM, we shift to third. 7,120 miles an hour. We're now approaching turn two in fourth gear. Swing way to the left, make it a constant radius turn as we head for turn three. Turn three is taken in fourth gear. We slow down and brake slightly about 105 miles an hour. As we're heading through turn four, we brake, shift down into third, through turn five, brake hard heading into turn six. Turn six, you take about 65 to 70 miles an hour. It's a sharp turn to the right. 180 degree turn, take it wide on the outside, then cut in close to the tires, accelerate out in second, third as we head for turn seven. We just about peak out in third gear, 7,000 RPM. We head up the hill into turn seven, we brake hard, shift down into third, swing out wide, cut down to the apex of the turn, we exit in third gear, we go into turn 7A, which is the entry into the straightaway. Go 
Pulling the rounds about 65 miles an hour now. Accelerating hard in third gear as we swing out wide onto the straightaway. Up to 7,000 RPM. Then into fourth gear. Now we're going down the straightaway approximately 130, 35 miles an hour. 7,000 RPM. That's the limit for this particular engine, the GT500. Brake hard as we enter turn nine, shift down into third. Again, entering wide, staying wide. Now we're in the center of the turn and we start cutting down for the apex of the corner. Here at turn nine, as we make our exit, we swing up very close to the fence and head down for turn one again. Going in front of the pit now, in fourth gear at approximately 135 miles. as we cross the finish line at Riverside International Raceway. I hope you've enjoyed your lap with us. And I hope you enjoy building your AMT model. Hopefully there's no copyright infringements or violations. There's no music involved there, and I, no. I, I don't think that's going to be a problem. Just finding the record will set you back money. Yes. I've seen people trying to sell them for 700 Oh! I don't think they get them, but you can find them on eBay, and if you kind of shop around and you kind of wait around and stuff, you can pick the record up for 50 to to $100. Mm. But you really got to shop and find somebody that's just anxious to get the money. Most people will not let go the record. Uh, the kit, if you can find the kit, is going to go for between 150 and $200. Gee. Just for the kit, no record. Find an absolutely complete version like this, and well, it just depends on negotiations between everybody, but mm -hmm. I've seen them go for $600. Oh, wow. If it's all absolutely complete with the rec record and, and the instructions and the proper decals and, and all of that stuff. So this is one of the most collectible 24th scale plastic models from the 1960s just that's crazy just wow. phenomenal just phenomenally neat mm -hmm. and and it isn't that the kit itself wasn't readily available they kept re-releasing it right there it here's is a subsequent release this is a brand new release this one's just in the hobby shops right now mm -hmm. just go find it and pay 15 bucks for it and uh here's another release a oh. uh, somewhat older release, uh, yes. but this is, this is released every few years. The molds are, are available and in really good shape. Uh, they do come with slightly different dress-up parts, yes. and so uh, if, you, if you find one of the originals, what you'll find is that you don't have to build it as a Shelby, which is sort of insane. Why would you buy the Shelby GT500, but you can build it as a dragster? It comes with right. the parts they to build it as a dragster. Option, yeah. And then subsequently, when they offered these kits, they either offered it as a Shelby, which these are, mm -hmm. or as a dragster. And uh, I think they even did a parts pack so that you could get the dragster parts separately and build your dragster should you. But I can't even imagine why anybody would want to turn one of these into a dragster and not build I it always, as a Shelby. Yeah, I always wanted to build it as it was supposed to be built. Never the dragster, the funny car. Because it's uh, it comes with the the right engine for a dragster or something. Right. But what you want is the Shelby. The original, yeah. And, uh, and then there were two different engines. Um, and this comes with the, uh, the earlier engine, the police interceptor. Oh, really? The 428 police interceptor Ooh. that had been re-modified and changed by Carroll Shelby with the dual quads and, mm. and all of that kind of nice. thing. And that's how you would want to build one of these, straight up 68. And I find it interesting that they didn't do a lap in a 68, even though the, the lap is in a 67. And the art on the front of the record is a 67 GT500. But you know, that's what Carroll Shelby was racing. And, of course. And, and not him. He was barred from going out on the track. He could he'd go out there and do a demo run like this. But because he had these heart problems, he eventually had a heart transplant. Yeah. Uh, they took away his racing license, and he was barred from racing. And that's really why he took to building race cars. 
mm. is they wouldn't let him race anymore. Okay. And if he wanted to be involved, that it, was yes. that was something he could do. Right. Lived a long, long oh. life. All these idiots who wouldn't let him out on the track because they said he was dangerous. I went to his like 90th, I forget what it was, birthday party. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah, he looked okay to me, mm. you know, and he was out on the track racing, just not competitively. There you go. Well, if you if you haven't been over to the channel, do pop over to the channel. And if you're not a subscriber, do subscribe to the channel, either with the old blue button, zoink, which probably doesn't work, so you probably don't see it, but blue button, or the new blue button, the fancy, fancy round blue button, zoink, right here, the fancy newfangled subscribe button. Click on that, takes you to the channel, makes you a subscriber. Well, we're not sure how you found this movie on the internet. We hope you didn't find it boring. And we will see you here again on Sunday with Sunday Driving Around. See, see you then. Bye-bye.